is Fields Auto Group Cubs pregame live. Cubs look to rock and roll five in a row. A sweep of the Reds is possible and the 94th win of the season and you're going to get it this morning right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Hello, welcome in. Good morning to you. It's Cubs pregame live presented by the great people at the Fields Auto Group. He's Todd Hollinsworth. I'm David Kaplan. Cubs locked in the wild card game next Wednesday against the Pirates, but the venue still to be determined. Pirates magic number to clinch home field advantage is two. Joe Madden's cruel trails Pittsburgh by two and a half ball games. Each have three left to play after today. The Pirates get today off, though. Well, hey, listen, you keep pushing and you push hard. It's good to see. This is a big game for Jason Hamill today. And all hap uh, happy October, by the way. Can you believe it? We're <laughs> October baseball, baby. <laughs> this is great stuff, right? So we're here. It matters. And so does this game today. I mean, you think, okay, the Cardinals, or excuse me, the Cardinals, the Reds, don't look so good right now. They've lost 11 in a row. But again, if you want to get that game at home, that wild card game, that idea that, you know what, we love that we got Arietta going maybe in that game. We love the fact that we could maybe get it at home. You got to keep winning. This is a pivotal game today. You can't give one back here and still maintain that hope of getting that game at home if you don't win today. Cardinals and Pirates split a double dip yesterday. In the event that the Cubs and Pirates have the same record after 162 games, the wild card will be played at Wrigley Field because the Cubs won the season series 11 games to 8. Up next for the Pirates, the same struggling Cincinnati Reds. And you, and look, the Reds are not good right now, and they've lost 11 straight. <laughs> but you've got to think that at some point they're not going to lose 15 straight then the season, or are they? Well, I mean, that's that's, that's very hard. I, I mean, I've watched what you have watched the last couple of days, and you tell me what you've seen from the Cincinnati Reds. The competitive spirit, fight, edge. I mean, all those things that you kind of talk about, teams that are in that, uh, you know, uh, spoiler position, that if, if you want to call it that. I haven't really seen that from the Reds. I mean, here's the thing. They've lost in a row. They've been outscored by 50 runs in the last 11 ball games. So here's what we know. The Pittsburgh Pirates, interestingly enough, have struggled with the Cincinnati Reds this year. They have. They flat out have. But what I've seen of late doesn't really give me hope that that's actually going to happen because the level of play has not been there. So we'll see how it goes. All right, let's talk a little bit before we get to today's matchup about the offensive explosion last night. Cubs put up a 10 spot at Great American Ballpark. Starlin Castro, a phenomenal night at the plate. Same for Austin Jackson, but for Castro, four hits, two RBIs, including his 11th home run of the season in his first four-hit game since July 21, 2013 in Colorado. Led the majors with a 426 batting average in the month of September. Couldn't have come at a better time for Joe Madden's team. Yeah, it's good to see Starlin. Uh, you know, really, you might be able to take this all the way back. I'd have to look at the dates, but you, you, know, you start to think back to when Starlin and lost his starting job at shortstop. Uh, you know, handled it like a pro, put a smile on his face, said, I, you know, said all the right things. I'm going to do exactly what Joe needs, what this team needs for me to do. And then he's kind of replayed himself back into a more important role by swinging that bat, most importantly. And we continue to see Starlin doing that. Right now, he's getting pitches to handle, pitches out over the plate, and he is on time. That right there was impressive. You know, that was 92 93, uh, fastball velocity right there. He's meeting the ball out in front. So he's really locked in right now, working to his pitch. Still, you know, a little aggressive at times, but again, using the field, cashing it in, hitting well over 400 in the month of September. So good to see that smile back. And here's him defensively. I mean, that is a major league all-star caliber play. Well, I, I mean, again, I, I, I don't know specifically if it's the simple fact that Starlin is not the star or the, you know, number one or two guy on this team any longer, but he's in a position where, and I've talked about this internal competition many, many times, you know, the idea is that the playing time that you're going to earn on this team is basically based on the performance that you put out there. So there is an accountability uh, that exists here in Chicago once again that hasn't existed over the last few years. I love that Brian Pena came around first, stopped, and he went, yeah. And then they showed John Lester, and he's clapping for him, too. Good to see. Well, he's got a smile on his face, and I think that's a key ingredient to Starlin's game. When he's happy, he plays well. Again, sometimes those mistakes do still happen at times. Uh, but with that being said, when he is a happy, when he is involved, when he is participating and producing, his game always seems to elevate. He, to me, sometimes there's streakers. I mean, there's a lot of guys who, you know, we talk about, Aces, you know, being consistent. We talk about great players. Anthony Rizzo's being consistent offensively. You know, Starlin is a little bit more of that hot and cold guy, but when he gets hot, boy, he can.
wild card game, whether it's at Wrigley or at Pittsburgh, because Starlin has played himself into the conversation that he should be the second baseman, but Joe goes simply by his gut feel and then a little bit of the analytics splashed in there. Well, it's going to be interesting. You're absolutely right. Uh, I th certainly believe that there's an argument to potentially be made that he maybe gets the start. I don't think that you're necessarily going to see him at the end of the ballgame, no matter what the circumstances are, and that's kind of how he's worked it. But again, in yesterday's ballgame, he's obviously out there all day as the game kind of got away. The Cubs scored 10 runs and put things away. But if it's a close ball game, margin of one, margin of two, you're going to see him probably put his better defensive team out there. And that's not just Starlin. It might be a few other guys as well. All right, Addison Russell collected, <coughs> excuse me, three hits of his own and drove in a pair. Rookie also stole two bases, and he is just continuing to play great bases. Well, it's good to see back on point again. I thought, it, you know, a little moment there where he's maybe getting a little too pulley with his swing kind of out in front a bit and drove back through the middle yesterday. But uh, everybody, this is what I wanted this Cincinnati, uh, excuse me, this, this series in Cincinnati against the Reds points early this morning, isn't it? <laughs> you get going, get those bats going. We talked about this at the front end of the series that the Cubs had only scored 12 runs in their last six ball games coming in. And we know the dynamic of this offense, which has been many people kind of contributing all along the way here in the second half. Well, we had some slumpy hitters and I just wanted to see guys start to get going. This is one of my guys right here, Addison Russell. You know, you watch his batting average come down a little bit over the last couple weeks. Start Starting to find that groove again, that swing. That's what this opportunity right here in Cincinnati represents against uh, some pitching that is not maybe the best that you've seen all season long. The ability to put together some good at bats, to get some hits, to feel good about running the bases, to feel good about your approach again. And another great start from lefty John Lester. He struck out nine, gave up just three hits, just one earned run. Goes over the 200th inning mark again. Retired the final 20 batters he faced and finishes the regular season 11 and 12 in large part because he got lousy run support at times this season. We passed Kenny Holtzman for most strikeouts in a single season by a Cubs left-handed pitcher, 203. Holtzman, who threw two no-hitters for the Cubs, was just behind him at 202. There's Hippo Vaughn, Dick Ellsworth, Ted Lilly back in 08 when he was really good, and Rich Hill, who just made it back to the big leagues at 183 back in that 07 playoff season that he had pitched against the Diamondbacks in. Lester's first season on the north side, pretty impressive. Despite the record, 200 innings, 200 strikeouts, an ERA of 3.34, a tough first month, and then from that point on, he was really good. And here's an interesting stat. Lester had never scored a run in his career before this season. He just scored six <laughs> runs in six September starts. That is crazy. Well, he started to swing the bat a little bit better. I mean, that's just it. I was talking to Jake Arrieta this morning about that as well. They take pride in being good hitters and uh, being better at the plate but it, it really I, I I think that exactly what you said John Lester's had a really good first season I think what we kind of have started to do is maybe compare him to Jake and that's a and that's not fair to John it, it shouldn't be a comparison it shouldn't be looked at that way what what Jake has done in the second half has been historic uh, you know this is Cy Young conversation this is dominating in a way that we haven't seen before but because John was also well he's the new guy in town he was the big signing over the winter you know, look at both of them and say well maybe John didn't live up to our expectations well John's number one goal every year is 200 innings. I mean, number one, so he knocks that off. 3-3-4, three, three, I don't think any of us are going to be complaining with that. You're absolutely right. The, the, there were some bumps and bruises there in early April, but come on, let's be fair. This guy has been absolutely outstanding all season long. He's going to be outstanding in the playoffs as well, and I guess that's what matters most this time of year, and I continue to hear it, and we've already seen him do it. Of course, we're going to get to see him do it in Cubby Blue is pitch like an ace during the postseason. So I, I really do agree with you on that one. Outstanding season. I think people just need to just kind of separate the conversation. Don't compare him to Jake. It's not the way this should be done. All right, let's take a look at today's pitching matchup. Jason Hamill goes up against Reds lefty John Lamb, who's coming off a tough start. Hamill 9-7 with a 386, but has famously struggled to go deep in the games in the second half. Only had one in his last several that he's gone over six innings. So important for him today to go out and pitch really well. Well, definitely setting the tone early is going to be a big key to this. Uh, obviously, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the show as well. But, uh, you know, those first 25 pitches is really where he struggled. It's an OPS of 962. That's going up against everybody all season long. So Jason looked to get into a groove early in this ball game. He's had some success. 4-2 ERA against the Reds this year. Think back to when the Reds were a little bit better than what they are now. They did have a good team at one point this year. Their pitching has been their big issue. Uh, but you're right. He doesn't come into this with any kind of great momentum. Uh, three earned runs or more in his last six starts. His road ERA is certainly something worth talking about. 6-4 and four with a 3-7-1. So he's definitely been better on the road than at Wrigley Field this year. 
But I, I mean, his stuff is still the same. I, I just want him to get to a point where that slider starts to matter a little bit more again. Uh, he's been in, getting himself behind in counts, and even on 2-0 counts, if you choose to use it, hitters aren't swinging at it because they don't have to. They're in hitters' counts, and they're ahead in the count. So he's got to get to himself to a point where he's getting ahead with that fastball and getting back to that nasty slider. Right. You, you talked about his stuff still kind of the same. The one thing that I keep watching, every time I watch him pitch, and I watched it on tape the other day here, the bite isn't the same. I don't know if that's the knee that bothers him that Chris Bazio talked about the other day, the hamstring that was an issue, but you just don't see that boom where it just falls off the table at the back end of the plate. Well, he doesn't have conviction. I think that's just it. He's searching for it. I mean, pitchers go through slumps like hitters go through slumps. It's just a lot of, a lot of times it's hard to... They're slumpy. Well, that's hard to describe sometimes. And you have guys, they say, listen, I don't, the ball doesn't feel right in my hands or my, my mechanics seem to be off right now. And you're right. Maybe something's nagging him just a little bit. What I was more or less referring to is the velocity has been there. His fastball velocity hasn't really come down. But you think back to what made him great in the first half. It was a little bit more, and he hadn't done this historically, but he was using that slider an awful lot more. But still, it was about the fastball command. And if you talk to Chris Basio, his slider was great because his fastball was great, and the two have to feed off each other. And if he's falling behind hitters, then he's not putting that fastball, getting ahead, low and away, getting ahead of hitters, he's not going to be able to use that slider, which was so devastating for him in the first half. Hamill has a 7-3 and three record with a 3.04 ERA, 19 night games, but he's just 2-4 and four with a 5.23 Ernie in 11 starts. During the daylight hours. Here's Joe Madden on today's stud. He was throwing the ball so well the last start, and all of a sudden it just went five hits in a row or something like that. Um, his stuff was good. Again, for me, with him, um, as he throws the ball where he wants to throw it, he gets, he's really good. And sometimes, you know, the, lo the, the location is not what he wants it to be, and that's where he gets into trouble. But his stuff is fine. It's, I mean, physically, he's fine right now. And, and in, your, in your mind now, Honestly, we haven't decided that yet. We we, we went through the uh, prim preliminary discussion the other day. We talked about all the different possibilities. Think about it. And then as we get, like, probably Monday would be the day we'll sit down. and Because I think we have to have the roster set by Tuesday, the workout day. So that gives us some... Yeah, right. Yeah, we're just going one thing at a time, man. That's, that's how I'm looking at it. Time for Built for Business, presented by our partners at Comcast Business. Red starter John Lamb's last two starts could not have been more different. Six scoreless against the Cardinals on September 21st, but he had to settle for the no decision in that one. Then on Saturday, lit up for five runs and just two innings against the Mets. He threw 62 pitches in his shortest start of the season. Comcast Business, built for business. Well, again, you know, maybe we talk a little bit of approach here going up against Lamb. His fastball command, now, I know it doesn't stand out. He only walked two hitters, but he really did struggle. Fell behind hitter after hitter after hitter in that start. You know, how do you attack that today? Do you go in there with the idea, okay, let's see if he's working around the strike zone. Is he, is he wild enough for us to start putting guys on base? Or do you just kind of keyhole him a little bit? And I think that really is the approach. I don't want to see the Cubs backing off going into this with the idea that, well, we haven't seen too much of him before. Let's be, you know, let's see what he's got for us today. I want them to still maintain their aggressiveness. We've seen them do this here in the first two games of the series, getting pitches to hit and doing damage, and you still want to see that. So you can get a feel. Watch Dexter Fowler's back quick. Cubs pregame lot presented by the Fields Auto Group. Kyle Schwarber getting his first start behind the plate in a month. The Cubs offense has a chance to accomplish something that hasn't happened in 86 years. We'll be right back. Cubs pregame live is presented by Fields Auto Group. Fields matters because you matter. See Fields first. FieldsAuto.com. We try to stay directly within the Fields Auto Group. Fields has a wonderful reputation. Hello, I'm Dan Fields of the Fields Auto Group. We simply treat people the way we want to be treated. They're as invested in me as a, as a person as I am in them. And that makes a huge difference. It makes me come back. It includes our free loaners, free car washes, and cafes. It's all part of the Fields Matters program. I felt confident in buying because of the service and the fact that this dealership would stand behind it. Fields Matters because you matter. Hey, what's up, my man? Chuckles, how's it going? So, what's with the getup? Did I miss the memo or something like that? Well, you missed out on the Illinois Lottery Cash for Life game. You can win thousands of dollars a week for the rest of your life. You know what that means, buddy? I'm not taking any chances. None.
up to $5,000 a week with Cash for Life from the Illinois Lottery. The longer you live, the more you get. So I heard about that new offer from AT&T and DirecTV, but they still lock you in to a two-year contract. That could cost you over $2,600, all for temperamental satellite TV service. AT&T and DirecTV, call it a new offer. But it's just the same old thing. Don't fall for AT&T and DirecTV's latest offer. Only Xfinity delivers the fastest internet and the best TV experience with X1. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. I'm dying to check. -in. It saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. OK, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Cubs pregame live presented by the Fields Auto Group. Let's look at the Cubs lineup brought to you by Wrigleyville Sports. Kyle Schwarber getting his first catching start since August. Well, Chris Bryant will get the day off. There you go. You got Dexter Fowler right up the top of the lineup in center. Austin Jackson, Starlin Castro after a hot night last night is at second. Rizzo, Denorfia, Baez, Schwarber, Hamill, and Addison Russell. Yeah, I like to see some of the guys getting some opportunity in there. Austin Jackson, big night last night. Career give, high five RBI. Give him the start today. I like it. Kind of keep it going. He's not going to be in there every day throughout the rest. As we know, we've kind of you know had some versatility with the the outfield. I think it's just a good spot to get him in there. He comes off having a, one of the best games of. Uh, of his career as you said five RBIs yesterday great at bats great approach two doubles in the ball game good to see get him back in there again Schwarber behind the dish that's going to be an awful lot of fun to see but again we talk about Joe setting himself up for what might happen in the playoffs you just never know you got to have some versatility back there here is Cubs manager Joe Madden on today's lineup I thought it was a perfect time uh, day game after night game um, to get him back there with Jason I think they you know they could work well together and that'll give me uh, probably two more games with Miggy, one more game with uh, Rossi over the weekend. So I thought it played out pretty good. It's interesting giving Miggy like two days in a row. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so that sort of helps. Yeah, I always like that. But yeah, well, you know, they got the night game tomorrow, and like I said, and then the Sunday day game. And um, he's done a really nice job with Danny Heron, too. So um, just chose to go that direction. With Hamill, you the phrase, like, there's no room for baseball narcissism. Like, whether it's him, the way Starlin's handled this. Um, you know, we talked about it in spring training a lot, and um, season in progress uh, for a lot of the guys. I think they've never been in this position before, and they understand you kind of like, in a sense, have to subjugate your own. Uh, I don't want to say feelings, your own numbers in a sense for that more altruistic uh, method of being a part of a team and um, so I think a lot of the guys that maybe had never been in that position before kind of like what's going on right now and so they're buying in and I also totally believe the veterans on this team have helped a lot in regards to making that all play that way um, talked about it all year I was fortunate enough in the past when Hinsky was part of the Rays and Percival and, and um, Cliff Floyd, a uh, big part uh, of that, uh, Danny Wheeler. Those guys really did the clubhouse good there, and these guys have done the clubhouse good here. You can, you know, can't quantify. I mean, it can, everybody wants a number on everything. This is human being stuff, and we have really good guys, human beings in that clubhouse that relate well to the others and keep them in line. And that's why. I mean, beyond everything we've done as a manager, as me as a manager, us as a coaching staff, I think the group within the clubhouse has done a wonderful job. 
All right, here's Cincinnati Reds lineup with Brian Price. Votto and Frazier back in for Cincinnati. Bourgeois will lead it off. He's hitting 240 on the year. Votto and his customary two hole. Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, Todd Frazier, Suarez, Barnhart, Tyler Holt, and the pitcher John Lamb, who is 0 for 15 this year at the plate, coming off a really rough start against the Mets. But we talked about the Cardinals start where he was filthy. Well, right, and sometimes, uh, you know, young guys do that. That's uh, completely expected a lot of times. I say, actually, I think that's the way most young guys typically are. Great, bad, great, bad, and you see it a lot. But uh, you still got to respect the middle of that uh, Cincinnati Reds lineup. I know we've talked about them struggling and not being very good offensively, only averaging a little over two runs over their last uh, 11 ball games. But you still got Votto in there. You still got Bruce Phillips has got very good and numbers. Frazier uh, very good numbers against um, uh, Jason Hamill today as well. And then you got Frazier back. So these guys have been dealing with some nagging injuries. It's going to be interesting to see what their approach is today. But still a big start for Jason. Be careful navigating the middle of that lineup. Cubs trail only one team, the Toronto Blue Jays, for the most walks in all of baseball. The last time the Chicago Cubs led all of baseball walks, 1929. 1929. All right. They talked about grinding at bats when Theo came here. I'm going to get guys that are grinders. How much has patience at the plate factored into the success on offense we've seen this season, especially from young guys? Well, this is a great question, Cap, and I think it's a long answer. I'm going to try and give you the short version of it. You know, Tony Gwynn taught me this when I was coming up with the Dodgers. He was down in San Diego. I used to, as many of us would do, whenever we'd see Tony, we'd just try to pick his brain. You know, when you start to hit and prove yourself at the major league level, you start to establish yourself, and it's at a high level start hitting home runs he would say hitting gets easier guys and here's why they start to respect you more the pitches they don't miss out over the plate any longer they miss off the plate so a lot of times you start to see the walks pile up now I will say very stubborn competitive grind out at bats very early in the year certainly set the stage for this but for me it's more about the offense you're getting rolling in the second half <coughs> top to bottom in the lineup we got guys hitting long balls we got guys feeding off each other this has turned into a very healthy lineup that's been scoring an awful lot of runs and when you get much like the Toronto Blue Jays as you noticed who was uh, who were up there at the top as well this is more pitchers are I don't want to pitch to this guy and oh by the way I don't want to pitch to that guy either so when they make their mistakes it's typically from the corners outside and you watch it that's kind of how it's been going for us a lot of those walks are guys putting themselves into position kind of keyholing and if you get into a hitters count boy they're missing way off the plate all right Cubs pregame live presented by the Fields Auto Group Todd's keys to a Cubs victory on the way plus a key performer I need a big win to do that back Yes, McRib lover, it's back. Celebrate McRib season. Now just $5 for a delicious McRib, Dr. Pepper, and medium fries at McDonald's. Bring luxury to your home with help from my family's store, Sherlock's Carpet and Tile. If you've been waiting to upgrade your carpet, wait no longer. It's National Karistan Month. Come in and take advantage of up to $1,000 in rebates. From traditional to contemporary, America's best carpet brings quality, beauty, and elegance to any interior setting. Let us help you upgrade the home of your dreams with Karistan Carpets. Come celebrate Sherlock's 40th anniversary and live beautifully. Hey, Ralph Punzel. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. I'm dying to check. It saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. OK, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great clips. It's going to be great. He sure does like staring out that window. He's always got a great idea afterwards. Breakfast. Galen, you're driving. Told ya. Right now, you'll lump two steak and egg burritos for just $3.33 at McDonald's. Police officer. A hockey player. An artist. I want to be a nurse. Well, I was thinking of being a mom. I'm going to be the best teacher in the whole world. I just want to grow up and be a good dad. They make sure we're safe. I'm even going to get better as I get bigger. I'm not sure what I want to be when I grow up, but I just when I grow up. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. 
You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Cubs and the Reds. It's called a businessman special in the Natty, and they'll have a decent crowd, I would think, as summer is leaving us. We're into October. Cubs and the Reds close out their season series right here on Comcast Sports Now. Welcome back to Cubs Pre-Game Live, presented by the Fields Auto Group. Time for our Fields Auto Group. Keys to the game. Here's Holly. All right, let's roll it out today, right out of the gate. Uh, you know. Is this a huge game for the Cubs? Well, listen, you want to win the baseball game, no doubt about it. I want to have that wild card conversation in our backyard, so uh, <laughs> let's make that happen. But right out of the gate for me is Jason Hamill. I really do believe this game is more about Jason than just about anything else. You know, we've talked about some of his struggles. We've talked about and given you some reasons why he should be good today. Uh, let's make it happen now. I think Jason needs to go out there and pitch with some conviction. This is a, 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 you know, a conversation that's going to lead us into more playoff conversation, and this hopefully is the game that we go back to. Hopefully we're saying, Seven great innings from Jason Hamill today leads us to what we might see in the postseason. So right out of the gate, want to see him absolutely command that fastball and start using that slider and make that count as well. Starts at the top. Here's what you need to know, Cappy. Uh, Lamb, as do many, struggle with the top of the lineup. But these numbers, you can't get past them. Listen to this, people. The leadoff hitter hitting 381 against him. The number two hitter hitting 391. The number three hitter hitting 450 against Mr. Lamb this year, which is massive slugging percentages. Most of the damage that's been done to him has been done by the top of the lineup. So let's talk about our three guys: Fowler, Jackson, Castro. I'll even throw in Riz because the number four hitter slugging against him as well. So big, big numbers, big time production, and WC hope, wild card hope. I've said it before, it seems like we should go out there and win this game today. you got to make it happen. If we want to continue this conversation, we want to see that celebration, we want to see the wild card game played at Wrigley Field next week, you got to win this game today. All right, time for our key performers. I get to go first. Now, I am 15 down to him for the season because he lets me wager on him. I'm putting 10 on Anthony Rizzo. You want Anthony Rizzo. It's a good number. Good one to have. Uh, Lamb, 361 batting average against the lefties. Have good numbers against him. I'm going to go Starlin. He's immune right now. He's seeing everything and hitting everything. So I'll go Starlin Castro. Yeah, those, those are my two choices. I go Rizzo. Thank you for watching Cubs Pregame Live, presented by the Fields Auto Group. Len and JD are next. Holly and I will see you on the other side for the postgame show. Enjoy the game, everybody. This Cubs Injury Report is brought to you by ATI Physical Therapy. Taking physical therapy to a higher level. Ask your doctor about ATI Physical Therapy. Get there. We try to stay directly within the Fields Auto Group. Fields has a wonderful reputation. Hello, I'm Dan Fields of the Fields Auto Group. We simply treat people the way we want to be treated. They're as invested in me as a, as a person as I am in them. And that makes a huge difference. It makes me come back. It includes our free loaners, free car washes, and cafes. It's all part of the Fields Matters program. I felt confident in buying because of the service and the fact that this dealership would stand behind it. Fields Matters because you matter. Oh, heads up. That calls for a toast. Finney's is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Wow, bear season was incredible, but it was absolutely freezing. So Wrigleyville Sports helped me warm up for bull season. They were on fire all year long. Then came the Blackhawks, and they got hot too. But now the boys of summer are back, and it's time to head to the south side. On second thought, it's a perfect day to get some sun in the bleachers. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, that's exactly what we deliver. 
This is Precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio and pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select Sierra 1500 Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Welcome to the show. in Cincinnati today. A couple of teams on opposite streaks. The Cubs look for their fifth consecutive win and a sweep of this series. Meantime, the Reds have dropped 11 in a row. Cubs and Reds wrap up this series. Welcome to Cubs baseball here on CSN. Jim Deshays and Len Casper. Jason Hamill will make his final start of the regular season, and this could be an important one in terms of the playoff roster. Yeah, as Joe Madden contemplates uh, the postseason and who will take the ball for that third game if there is a third game. Uh, we know it's going to be Arietta in the wild card game. We know it's going to be John Lester in the division series first game if there is one. And will Jason Hamill get the ball in that next game early? He was really good. Remember the control? So outstanding early in the year. April and July, 6-5. and five with a 3-1-3 ERA. 20 starts, he walked only 24. Since then, it's been shaky. The home runs up, the walks up, and the ERA up at 5.66 August and September combined. Yeah, he hasn't gone very deep either. Over his last 14 starts, has not gone seven innings. So a big one today for Hamill. Left-hander John Lamb will go for the Cincinnati Reds, his first career start against the Cubs. Yeah, a lot of helmet rubbing last night in the Cubs' 10-3 win over the Reds. We'll wrap up the series next. Want to make a trade? I need your Buster Posey Tops card. What you got? I'll trade you. You for Matt Cain? Ortiz and Pedroia? Ugh, come on, Mike Trout All-Star card. I've got an idea. You collected two? This is going to get the deal done. 1969 Johnny Bench All-Star Rookie? Deal. Rediscover Tops. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. It's the Gerald Kia Grand Opening Celebration. Come and share in our celebration as we open new doors on Aurora and Ogden Avenue in Naperville. We're celebrating by giving you the biggest discounts of the year with the largest inventory in Chicagoland, backed by Gerald's exclusive lifetime warranty. Gerald Kia will serve you better. Come test drive a new Kia today and see why Gerald Kia is the 2015 National Dealer of the Year for excellence in customer satisfaction. Come in today to celebrate the grand opening of the all-new Gerald Kia of Naperville. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T Uverse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. If you make it down here to Great American Ballpark, make sure you stop by the Reds Hall of Fame. You might find some stuff uh, about the big red machine in the 70s. Pretty good bet. Yeah, pretty good chance you're going to see a little Joe Morgan, little Johnny Bench. David Ross His having company. fun in the dugout as the Cubs are trying to sweep this series. Let's hear from Joe Madden on this special group, the 2015 Chicago Cubs. A lot of the guys that maybe had never been in that position before kind of like what's going on right now. And so they're buying in. And I. I also totally believe the veterans on this team have helped a lot in regards to making that all play that way. Um, 
We've talked about it all year. I was fortunate enough in the past when Hinsky was part of the Rays and Percival and, and um, Cliff Floyd, a uh, big part uh, of that, uh, Danny Wheeler. Those guys really did the clubhouse good there, and these guys have done the clubhouse good here. Matt Ross and Lester and Montero, Coglin and the whole group, Dan Heron. And we're getting set, even though it's raining, and it has cooled off quite a bit. Kind of has this uh, late April feel here on the first day of October. Let's get the Cubs Southwest starting lineup against a rookie lefty named John Lamb. Dexter Fowler in the leadoff spot. Big night for Boston Jackson, a career high five RBIs last night. Starlin Castro tied his career high with four hits. Rizzo will clean up. The former Red Chris DeNorthy is at left. Javi Baez is at third. Kyle Schwarber will catch uh, for the first time as a starter uh, in a month. Hamill will hit eighth with Russell the shortstop coming off the three hit night. Batting ninth. A peek at the Reds defensively, and you'll find Jason Bourgeois in center field. Uh, uh, newcomer Tyler, or excuse me, Bourgeois on left. Newcomer Tyler Holt is in center. Jay Bruce is the right fielder. Uh, Frazier and Votto back in there. They were out of the lineup in the ball game yesterday. Suarez and Phillips up the middle. Tucker Barnhart solid defensively behind the plate, and the Alexis starting pitcher is the young left-hander uh, John Lamb 25 years of age one of three lefties acquired by the Reds in the Johnny Cueto deal uh, pretty well inked up you see he went into the catcher's position to catch that throw he seems to be every bit the left-hander here this Lamb uh, nine starts one and four the 540 ERA a fastball cutter curveball and a change changeup is a real plus pitch for him Outstanding year at AAA, most uh, with the Royals at Omaha, and a little bit with the Reds AAA club in Louisville. So we're underway, and if today's Cubs leadoff man gets a hit, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to Make a Wish Illinois. Cubs will try to tattoo this left hander, or at least add to those tattoos. Fowler hitting right handed. And he takes a pitch off the plate inside. Uh, was out of the lineup last night after scoring his 100th run of the year in the first inning of the series Tuesday. Working quickly, not taking a lot of time between pitches. His fastball will max out at 94, sit right around 91, 92. That will roll foul to third. Him, uh, what, three, four years ago, was one of the top pitching prospects in baseball. Had Tommy John surgery. He's had to work his way back from that. It's been a bit of a struggle for him, but as I mentioned, really good in the minor leagues this year. Hey, he looks like a Dukes of Hazard guy there, doesn't he? <laughs> good call. <laughs> General Lee's probably parked outside the ballpark. He's actually from California. As Fowler rolls one to Phillips. Someday I want a scientist to figure out how your brain works. Because I can't figure it out. <laughs> it's going down a lot of fun roads, man. <laughs> it's my favorite game. Who does he look like? <laughs> Here's Jackson. I can't argue with you, by the way. Austin knocked in five, three hits, two doubles in the ball game last night. Yeah, he had, had not had a lot of success in a Cub uniform. He hasn't had a ton of playing time, so nice to see him break out in a big way in that ball game last night. Still looking for his first home run in a Cub uniform. He had eight with the Mariners. It's never been a big part of his game anyway. Up and in, according to Bill Miller, the crew chief, calling balls and strikes. Jim Wolf is at first. Got to keep Wolf away from Lamb. Eddings and Johnson second and third. And a line shot to Suarez for the second out. Jackson's pretty well locked in with the night he had last night and absolutely smothered that ball. That thing had all kinds of 
heat on it. Maybe a little funky action at the end. Suarez just able to hang on. This guy had a big night last night. Did he ever? Both ways, offense, defense, and just got out of the way of that inside pitch. Well, you know, Lamb, a guy, as I mentioned, has a very good changeup, so it's important for him to work inside. He throws a lot of cutters, so they like to move the guys off the plate or try to get weak contact in on the hands with that cutter to set up the changeup and then the elevated fastball. It's a pretty familiar profile for a left-handed pitcher. The majors with a 426 average in September 0 for 1 to start the month of October. Cubs go down in order on this rainy day. It's Jason Hamill to the mound. Aruba, Jamaica. Now we can actually take it. To Costa Rica, Bahama. Hi. Come on, pretty mama. Belize, Puerto Rico. People, why don't we go down to Mexico? We'll get there fast, and you can take it slow. Anywhere you want to go, all the way down to Dominican Republic. Nice hit. Southwest is bringing our low fares to tropical destinations. Book now at southwest.com. The Honda for You sales event is happening now. And you could get a great deal in a 2015 Honda Accord. The Accord is the best-selling midsize car in America, which makes sense because it's also the best value. And the Accord is loaded with standard features. So hurry into your Honda dealer today, and you could get a great deal in a 2015 Accord during the Honda for You sales event. There is no room in baseball for errors and mental mistakes. Scouting is an important part of baseball, but, but stop, stop, stop. But it's also an important part of that. Just trying to get them loose. If, how about a head first slide next time, man? That'd be awesome. If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. You can't always protect her. Make sure her tires will. The Michelin Premier Tire with Evergrip technology. Even when half worn, it's still safe. Safe when new, safe when worn. for the Reds. They dropped 11 in a row for the first time since 1998. They've only put up 25 runs during this losing streak, but they do have Votto and Frazier in there today. Votto will hit behind Bourgeois ahead of Brandon Phillips. Jay Bruce cleaning up. You see Todd Frazier trailing just Matt Carpenter in the National League in doubles. Suarez, Barnhart, Holt, and John Lamb, the pitcher, still looking for his first major league hit. Cubs defensively. Denorfia gets a start in left this afternoon. Fowler back in center. Austin Jackson will handle rights. Baez, Russell, Castro, Rizzo on the infield. Castro made a sparkling play here last night. Kyle Schwarber, as Len mentioned, his first starting assignment behind the plate since uh, August 31st. And on the mound, Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher for the Cubs. Jason Hamill making his final start of the year. Nine up, seven down, a 386 earned run average. No wins, no losses, and three starts against the Reds this year. Career high, 31st start for Jason Hamill. He's had first inning problems. Last time out, however, that was not the issue. He was really good early against the Pirates, and then it just kind of fell apart in the fifth inning. Yeah, that seems to be the, the storyline with Jason this year, whether it's the first inning or the fifth. You know, one big inning seems to be his undoing, and I guess you could say that about a lot of pitchers. And he'll be going along nicely, and all of a sudden the wheels will come off. But overall, a solid season. 23 first inning runs. So it certainly has been a problem. Bourgeois stays alive. Two and two the count. And it's full three and two. Just 
Jason actually pitched in the wild card game over in the American League last year. And a base hit to left. Diving stop there on the track by DeNorfia. But Bourgeois has a stand up double, lead off double for Bourgeois. Might have been three had DeNorfia not left his feet to smother that ball, but a good start for the Reds at Bourgeois. Reds are interesting. They've played from in front a lot this year. They've scored first in a lot of their games, but they've ended up losing. A whole bunch of games where they had early leads. The pitching has not been good. And of course, they've gone to this all rookie rotation now since the trade deadline. And that hasn't worked out real well for them. Votto swings away at the first pitch. High drive out in the deep left center. The Norfia back near the wall. He's got it. Bourgeois will head back and tag, and he'll head to third. Joey Votto just missed a home run. And his return to the lineup, he sat out last night. Some discomfort behind his shoulder. <laughs> he wants no part of the fist bump from anybody in that dugout. He said, no, no, thank you. I'm not taking any congratulations. High towering drive. And now oh, there he goes. Now he's now he's getting it. Cubs will bring their infield in. Yeah, Hamill uh, came in in the 12th inning for the A's last year. He did not take the loss. He gave up the uh, game ending RBI single to Salvador Perez. That is low. Uh, we would not expect Jason to be on the wild card roster. Probably would be Arietta Lester, the two starters, and then a bunch of relievers. Yeah, and you, you would take Lester just in case something happened to Arietta. Swing and a miss by Phillips. You have to you know, be protected just in case your 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 starting pitcher ended up with a little tweak out in the bullpen or got hurt early and had to come out. Big bat waggle for Phillips as he takes that pitch low. Two balls and a strike. Last day of school here for the Reds here at home. They go on the road to finish the season. Uh, they'll be in Pittsburgh, as a matter of fact. Yeah, the Cubs win today. Well, even if they don't, they're going to root hard for the Reds. In that series in Pittsburgh, the Pirates' magic number to host the wild card is two. That's a combination of Pirates' wins and Cubs' losses. Pirates are off today. Swing and a miss, two and two. So if the Cubs run the table win the final four games they would need Cincinnati to win two of three in Pittsburgh and then the Cubs and Pirates would finish with the same record Cubs would win the tiebreaker based on season series head to head and the Pirates would come to Wrigley. What a percentage on the chances of that happening you'd have to go I don't know about five percent maybe. Well and talk to Joe today if that is still in play as we see the uh, Elgin Toyota upcoming schedule. So if you let's say you go into the Sunday game and, it, and you need a win and a Pirates loss he said I probably wouldn't do anything differently other than leave my starting position players in the game longer. Right. Otherwise you kind of treat it like a spring training game. Yep. A couple of A.B.s. Get the showers. 2 2 to Phillips swing and a miss on the slider. When the handle is at his best, that is his out pitch. And a big strikeout, two away. Yeah, and it's a, one of the more effective sliders in the game. He gets a lot of swings and misses with it. And, and Phillips is kind of a swing first guy. He rarely walks. He's, you know, he's in uh, swing mode here with that man on third base. He's trying to drive that run home. Well, that's the thing about Hamill's slider. Everybody knows that it's his primary weapon. They know under duress he's going to come with it. But still, a lot of times they can't do anything with it. Jay Bruce takes ball one. Baez, the third baseman, off the line and playing right in the base path. Russell shaded up the middle. And the 1 1. 
or 1 0 rather now two balls no strikes 54 degrees at game time feeling rather fallish out here today that last one was an attempt at a curveball and he's kind of spun it up out of the zone two and one I suppose it would have been appropriate for the Reds to have one final rain delay here in their final home date but hopefully that doesn't happen no, the skies are brightening. I think we're going to be okay. Left field to Norfie is over, and he will not have a play. Jason Hamill, nine and seven. So if he gets the W today, uh, he will match his career high. He's been a ten-game winner on three previous occasions. Curveball there, and he, he, been, you know, some of his recent starts, he's featured the curveball a little bit more. Most of the year, hitters could count on fastball slider about 90 percent of the time. Bourgeois at third, two outs, first inning. Frazier on deck. Three and two on Bruce. Nothing toward the inside part of the plate as of yet. Schwarber sets up toward the outside again, and that ball fouled out of play. And well, contemplating his options as he rubs up that baseball. Where to go? Maybe try to throw that slider down and in towards the back foot. A go to pitch for Hamill sometimes to the left handed hitters. You see, all the work has been away. Here they go. And call strike three. Bruce will make his case to Bill Miller. But Hamill gets out of it. No score after an inning. Not the vast frozen plains or a wall of mountains. Nothing would get between him and what he was after. Some call him obsessed. We call him Mr. Coors. And the pure Rocky Mountain water he hunted down is still used to brew the beer that bears his name. Coors, the banquet beer. Subaru. The 2015 Subaru Outback. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. When you get away from smartphones and video games and tablets, it's amazing what you can really plug into. This season, shop the brands you love, plus thousands of items on sale now. Sports Authority, all things sporting good. Saturday on Plus, the Hawks face Sharpie for the first time in a regular season tune-up at the UC. Blackhawks, Stars, Saturday at 7.30 at CSM Plus. Blackhawks preseason hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by AT&T U-First high-speed internet. The Cubs have clinched, and CSN Chicago has the most playoff coverage in town. Celebrate the second season and soak in every moment as the boys in blue look to make history this fall. Cubs 2015 postseason coverage lives on Comcast Sportsnet. 
Welcome back, everybody. The most popular way to follow the Cubs push to the postseason is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look-ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat cast, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat now. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> one and all on Anthony Rizzo. He drives one to center. Very deep. Holt on the track for the out. Rizzo sitting on 30 home runs. He's driven in 95. Did a pretty good charge on that one, but big part of the yard. The Norfia ball one. Pinch hit bases loaded walk in the eighth last night struck out in the ninth 19th round pick of the Reds and 2 out of Wheaton College. So the Norfia an interesting topic in terms of that postseason roster. He has hit 324 as a pinch hitter this year, 11 out of 34. A veteran guy, can play all three outfield spots. Sounds like all those roster conversations will basically happen on Monday before the Cubs probably head to Pittsburgh as he strikes out two away. Joe uh, said one thing at a time. Yeah, I haven't sat down and played with the, game, the names and the numbers, um, but certainly you know, the Norfolk, the kind of guy you'd like to have available off the bench. Uh, there are a lot of guys that uh, bring different skill sets to the table, and that's what Joe's going to have to sort out. Yeah, you can make a case for a lot of guys to be on that roster. And if they're not, they still can be on the division roster as Baez swings and misses and on the hands that time one ball one strike birthday wishes today Mary Morello retired Libertyville High School teacher shot out toward the alley and it'll get down. Baez on his way to second. The throw will be cut off. Two out double. Yeah, certainly a time with two outs where you want to press it to get into scoring position. You see that ball headed towards the gap. Off you go. Sell out. Go hard. Make sure you get to second base. Looked like a cutter that didn't quite get in on his hands. And Baez Ripped the double into the right field corner last night. This time he goes into the left center gap. That'll give Schwarber a chance, hitting seventh today and catching. And inside ball one. Big numbers in this ballpark. 435 this season. One and one. Just lamb as the Reds were throwing the ball around the horn before the first inning. He got down in a catcher's stance to get the ball from Todd Frazier. He did it again before this second inning, so that seems to be his thing. Ball strike three on a curve. It's 71 to get out of the inning. Two-out double Baez. No runs, though. 
Still nothing, nothing in the second. It's Ford SUV season. Now just sign and go with zero down, zero due at signing, and zero first month's payment, hassle-free. Choose from Ford Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition, every SUV. Ford makes it easier for you to be unstoppable during SUV season. Now get a Ford Escape with zero down, zero due at signing, and zero first month's payment during Ford's SUV sign and go event, only at your local Ford dealer. Add an elegant masonry appearance to your exterior walls with Novick Vinyl Siding Panels from Menards. It's easy to install and available in six colors. Stacked stone panels are just $2.99 per square foot. Menards is your residential steel roofing headquarters. A new roof is all about choices. Make a lasting energy-saving choice with residential steel roofing. It's environmentally friendly and offers investment-grade protection. 16-inch hidden fastener panels are only $1.75 a linear foot. Save big money at Menards. So I heard about that new offer from AT&T and DirecTV, but they still lock you in to a two-year contract. That could cost you over $2,600, all for temperamental satellite TV service. AT&T and DirecTV, call it a new offer. But it's just the same old thing. Don't fall for AT&T and DirecTV's latest offer. Only Xfinity delivers the fastest internet and the best TV experience with X1. Hey, want to know all that goes into a Cubs TV broadcast? Tonight, go behind the scenes with us in the booth. See what it takes to produce a Major League Baseball game, all part of the hunt for October, presented by Felco tonight on Sportsnet Central. That's must-see TV. I'm intrigued. I uh, got a tweet, and I thought I might answer it. Dan wants to know, why are they called the Reds? Well, the original uh, name was the Red Stockings. The Cubs were the White Stockings. The Reds wore red socks, so it makes sense. Then they were the Red Legs, then just the Reds. And uh, briefly in the 50s, right, they went back to the red legs. Yeah, because of the whole communism thing. Yeah, and it was red never skin. really openly acknowledged, but it seems that... Nobody wanted to root for the reds in the 50s. Right. <laughs> one and no on Todd Frazier, the all-star. Now one and one. He left on Tuesday with a slight strain of his right Achilles. Was in the lineup last night, took BP, decided wasn't good enough to go, but he's in there today. 1-1 one, one pitch is inside. You know, there was a team, a minor league team once called the Cub Sox, and it was a, a team of the shared affiliate between the White Sox and the Cubs. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1869. Baseball's oldest pro franchise started here in Cincinnati. First pro uh, baseball game ever, May 4th of 1869. And it was the Cincinnati Red Stockings over the Cincinnati Great Westerns, 45 to 9. Oh, man. Somebody missed an extra point. Get the ball down. The Red Stockings would win their first 130 games. High in the air, Denorfia into the corner, and he's got it. Foul territory actually almost overran it as he retires Frazier. That ball was in the air for a long time. Denorfia's been busy here early. Left his feet to snag that base hit the double by bourgeois then ran a long way to run down Votto's drive now into the corner he goes his little limbo move to catch that a high fly by Frazier swing and a miss by Suarez so 1876 is when the National League was established and both these franchises were part of it Did you know that the 
the Red Stockings were kicked out of the National League in 1880. For what? Well, they rented out the park on Sundays and sold beer during oh, yeah. games. No, violation of the blue laws. No. Came back to the NL in 1890. It's a base Ooh. hit. Look out, Doug. Doug Eddings had to get out of the way. Second hit for Cincinnati. That one was really barreled up. Looks like it had a little knuckling action on it. Yeah, they have a big opening day parade here, and for a long time, the, the first baseball game of every regular season was here in Cincinnati. That's yeah. kind of been lost, that tradition with the, the Sunday night games now. Yeah, oh, went away a few years ago. Now the switch hitting catcher Barnhart. Curve for a strike as J.D. mentioned. We've seen Hamill use that pitch. A lot here early. Yeah, and that's a good, you know, get over pitch against left handed hitters for him. A little backdoor curveball. Hitters tend to quit on it. You find the outside part of the plate, get a called strike, and go to work from there. That time you got a little benefit of the doubt from Bill Miller. Ground ball. Castro's got it. Russell, and they turn it. Four, six, three to end the inning. On to the third. Nothing, nothing. Who says desirable can't also be responsible? Standard safety features. The Lexus RX is proof that fun can be good for you. See your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. To navigate any map, you need a legend like Jeep Cherokee. 2015 four-wheeler of the year. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And introducing Jeep Renegade, the newest addition to the most awarded SUV lineup ever. Now get an additional $500 bonus cash. Hurry into the Jeep Celebration event. Skin's ability to retain moisture and elasticity weakens over time, so skin looks older. Gold Bond Strength and Resilience. Plumping moisturizers and proteins leave skin more resilient, youthful. 84% saw improvement in five days. Gold Bond Strength and Resilience. If you battle back pain, don't tough it out. Turn it off. Smart Relief from Iseot. Turn on relaxing pulses that immediately block even chronic pain. It's wireless, reusable, and easy to use. Turn on Smart Relief and turn off pain. Scoreless as we head to the third. Meet your favorite Cub players and alumni at the 2016 Cubs convention, which will take place January 15th through the 17th at the Sheridan Chicago Hotel and Towers. Hotel packages and weekend passes are on sale now. Visit Cubs.com slash convention to get your passes before they sell out. And you know they're going to sell out. Let's get a replay of that Chris Denorfi catch in foul territory. It's more of a recreation of John Maley, the hitting coach. Strike on Jason Hamill, career high 11 hits this year. Oh, and two. Continues to rain lightly. Bounced over the mound. It'll be picked up by Suarez. As I mentioned, 
mentioned the Lamb at one time, a top pitching prospect for the Royals, and I think probably considered by most as the, you know, the third in terms of the, his ceiling in this deal that they made with the Royals for Johnny Cueto. But I'm intrigued by this kid, given you know what he once was and the mix of pitches that he has. He's got a chance to be successful here. I've really seen him work that change up very often. That's a plus pitch for him. Maybe second time through the order, we'll see that a little bit more. Addison Russell misses inside. Lamborn in La Palma, California, went to Laguna Hills High School. His grandfather, John Ramsey, was the longtime PA announcer for just about everybody in L.A. Dodgers, Rams, Raiders, Trojans, Angels, Kings, Lakers. He was the first public address announcer for the Super Bowl, did five in all. He passed away seven months before his grandson was born. There's another John Lamb that pitched for the Pirates a little bit in the early 70s. I don't believe any relation. Photographers near those mics. One out base runner. Here's Fowler. 65 career homers, 65 career triples for Dexter. Ball one, and here comes Barnhart to the mound. It's almost a, a default move now, isn't it, for catchers after a walk? Ball one, time to have a chat. I saw some comments from the commissioner, Rob Manfred, about continuing to look at ways to streamline games, with the, the pace of the game moving along. And there was a reference to possibly limiting mound visits, maybe making a, a pitcher who comes into the game face multiple batters. Um, I do think there's value in maybe limiting mound visits and and say that maybe two visits per inning by either the pitching coach manager or any teammate without taking a guy out. How about that? Do we need yeah. a catcher to go out there three I, right, times an yeah, inning? I would be even more extreme than that. I would, I would really limit the, the number of trips over the course of a game that a catcher could make to the mound or for any given pitcher. Well, you see it now a lot too, where the home plate umpire, you know, the catcher will, will, will ask for time and will start out there. And it used to be the umpire would wait a little bit and then go out to break up the conference. A lot of times now you see the umpire, as soon as the catcher leaves, he'll just follow him. So I'm going to let you go out there. I'm going to be right on your heels. Well, what day was it? It was the Arietta night, right? Uh, Sunday night. That game against the Pirates was just cruising along. And then. Yeah, I think yeah. Clint Hurdle used uh, several pitchers in one inning, and look, it's not to blame the, the managers as Lamb has walked back-to-back -back hitters. Especially you get into September, you're going to use all your guys, but it does really take away the momentum of a game, especially late. Yeah, it's like an NBA game when all the timeouts come late. Um, yeah, and absolutely, you can't put it on the managers. They're going to take advantage of every strategic edge that they have. In, in September, with expanded rosters, there's no move that can't be countered. Two on for Jackson. He lined out to the shortstop his first time. And he pulls one foul to left out of play. The 
one thing about having relief pitchers face more than one batter is that could have the dual effect of helping a little bit with pace of game and possibly helping with offense. Mm -hmm. I know that is another concern yeah. the commissioner has. I would prefer not to mess too much with the actual game itself, but if you did something like that, took away that matchup advantage a bit, you never know. Jackson to deep left, and it will go! A three-run homer. He's knocked in eight over the last two days. A big night last night, and there indeed is his first home run in a Cub uniform. He had a bullet to short first time up. Austin Jackson obviously seeing the ball very well, and even better than that, hitting it very well. Make him pay for the two walks right ahead of Jackson's at bat. Boss Hogg is not going to be happy. Just like that, three to nothing. There's Castro. Curve strike. Well, it's going to be a, a, a process for all these young Reds pitchers learning on the fly here. Saw it last night from Anthony DiScofani, the young right hander, who's had a real nice year. He's been in the rotation all season. Got off to a great start. He was striking everybody out. Had six strikeouts to the first uh, eight batters for seven batters. Looked like he was going to pitch a shutout and end up giving up five runs in five plus innings. Gets Castro for his third strikeout. Yeah, it takes a lot off this one. This is a Randy Wolf-ish, 68 miles an hour to get Castro. Rizzo gave it a ride in the second in his first at bat as he fly to the warning track. Yanks this one foul. Austin Jackson with a three run homer. The wind and the pitch. Going two. back walks and then Austin Jackson with a three run homer and hugs around the dugout three nothing the Honda for you sales event is happening now and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Honda Accord the Accord is the best-selling mid-size car in America which makes sense because it's also the best value and the Accord is loaded with standard features so hurry into your Honda dealer today and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Accord during the Honda for You sales event. It's that time of year. There's going to be a lot that scares you. Replacing your windows shouldn't be one of them. Call 866 for Feltco. Right now, get two windows for the price of one. Plus, no money down and no interest until 2017. Hurry, this treat and two windows for the price of one and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Hold the phone, because AT&T and DirecTV are now one which means you can access your DVR at the DMV. 
change channels while he changes pants. You don't have to be a couch potato. You can be a train potato. And let them watch all the shows they love inside the ride that you really kind of hate. Introducing the all-in-one plan, only from DirecTV and AT&T. The playoffs are near, but first, your cup to continue their second-half surge in Milwaukee. It's MVP hopeful Anthony Rizzo and the boys in blue against Chris Davis and the Brew Crew. Cubs, Brewers, tomorrow at 7 on CSN. Welcome back. Cubs lead three zip. Bottom of the third. Get into the holiday spirit a little early and support Cubs charities by being part of our holiday tradition. Purchase your limited edition. Chicago Cubs home and away Christer, uh, Christopher Radko glass ornament. Ornaments cost $60. All proceeds will benefit Cubs charities. Visit Cubs.com slash ornament for more information. Runs scored. Four guys in the National League in triple digits, including Dexter Fowler for the first time in his career. Tyler Holt takes a strike. Second straight start. Just got uh, claimed off waivers from Cleveland on Sunday. One for three with a walk and two runs last night. In his Reds debut. And he bunts foul to third. Well, he's a speed guy. He doesn't hit for power. He only has six minor league home runs and better than 2,300 uh, plate appearances. And uh, with the rain, grass a little wet, slippery. Not a bad idea to make a guy try to make a play with a wet ball. to Rizzo he'll underhand toss to Hamill covering first time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo use hashtag Northside data strong fan you just might see yourself later in the game brought to you by T-Mobile Pitcher Lamb 0 for 15 with the run knocked in, eight strikeouts. and Heron comes probables for this weekend's series in Milwaukee. Ariel Pena, Tyler Wagner, Jorge Lopez. Three rookie right-handers for the Brewers. We've got some homework to do. Yeah, well, and uh, I've seen a lot of rookie pitchers here in the last couple of weeks because their the schedule's been heavy Brewer red and uh, Reds have been featuring this all rookie rotation for a good long while now and that's been the case more recently with the Brewers. The hitters will have some homework to do as well. Breaking down the video. It's a hole in Denorfia will have to chase it down. That's the first major league hit for John Lamb. And it's a double. He seems rather blase about it. I was going to say, yeah. I thought he might be a little kind happier of, about kind it. He's kind of going with the act, act like you've been there before. He's getting a nice round of applause from the boys in the dugout. I think he's still grinding on those two walks yeah. he gave up before the yep. home run. Yeah, that's not likely to lighten a pitcher's mood all that much. The Norfia had really shortened up for him. Lamp made him pay. Bourgeois slider strike. Back with the Cubs, second time around. Oh, 
tenth major league season. Two-year two deal plus a club option, so he's under contract for this year and next, perhaps beyond. Total of twenty million dollars. Middle of the rotation guy, and he performed as we said so well early. He's had a struggle in the second half. A 6.46 ERA in September. With context, however, I mean, you, you look at that number, and you go, "Woo, that's ugly." That's a base hit. Lamb had to hold to make sure it got through. Back-to-back -back one out hits with Votto coming up. The context being this, in the second half, he's dealt with, uh, had a hamstring uh, injury. He had a one, uh, at least one rain short start. He had a couple of games where he was pitching okay, but Joe Madden just didn't like the matchup. So he made an early move to the bullpen. Uh, we've talked about that with Hamill and Hendricks. Sometimes that ERA is a little bit inflated because uh, they don't get the chance to stay in the game. Um, because the manager prefers the bullpen option. So, you know, you've worked five and a third, you've allowed three or four runs. If you could stay in and stretch that outing out to, a, you know, seven innings, all of a sudden that ERA looks a little better. Here's Votto. And a strike. So as a pitcher, how do you fix that? Well, you just continue to pitch hard and pitch better and convince the manager that you're the better option in those crisis situations in the sixth inning than the guy that's warming up in the bullpen. Lotto has a very outside chance of joining a pretty exclusive club. And he would need a home run in eight walks over these last four games to do it. Paused by Hamill, time called. That is the 300 batting average, 30 homer, 150 walk club. Barry Bonds did it four times, Ted Williams three times, Babe Ruth twice. He's got a 537 on base average during this 46 game on base streak, too shy of the club record. Except by Pete Rose in 1978. Yeah, just a, an unbelievable run he's had. It, it's interesting, both uh, he and Jake Arrieta certainly were considered but did not make the All Star team. They've both probably been the best two performers in the National League since the All Star game. I doubt that either one of them would say that that was motivation. It's, you know, they're both really good performers to begin with, but they have been unbelievably good since the break. You know, and you consider what Votto's done in the context of a guy like Ted Williams, and you're always hesitant to make comparisons to one of the all-time greats. But back when Ted Williams was playing in the big leagues, uh, there was eight, eight teams in the league. So he saw a lot of the same pitchers over and over and over again. That's not so much the case in the modern game. No, not at all. And back when you know Teddy Ballgame was doing his thing, starting pitchers stayed in the games longer. So not only did he see the same pitchers more often, but and more frequently in terms of at bats per game. Here he goes into saying lot slugger mode. Check him out. Crouching, choking up. Down by Schwarber, but Bourgeois will take second on a wild pitch. Uh, just looking, uh, Ted Williams faced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pitchers in his career. He had more than 100 plate appearances against those guys. Williams hit 406 overall in 1941. You're looking at the uh, his second half numbers: a 583 on base, Savato 450 or 549, excuse me, this year. Impressive. Uh, the most plate appearances Vado's had against any pitcher, 61 against Wandy Rodriguez. And he's got a long career ahead of him, but you know, the guys at the top of that list uh, Rodriguez, Giovanni Gallardo, Chris Carpenter, Kyle Loesch. These are guys. He's not going to face much, if at all, ever again. Yeah, and the counter argument, I guess.
this would be, but because of expansion, pitching has been thinned out. I'm not sure I completely buy into no, that. That's not um, true. But but I think you know the I, most hitters would tell you that the more they see a guy, the more comfortable they're going to be. Jason Hamill just struck out an MVP candidate in a big spot, two away. Well, Hamill able to pitch around a leadoff double in the first, now trying to work out of this jam. And boy, this is particularly tough with a couple of guys in scoring position at Votto up there. In uh, 1957, so we're getting towards the end of. Williams career second half of that year he hit 453 with a 594 on base percentage Fine shot Jackson makes a catch on the move that saved two runs that's a pretty good day drive in three save two Jackson Jackson getting it done. So after three, it's still three, nothing Cubs. Oh, what a catch. Want to make a trade? I need your Buster Posey Tops card. What you got? I'll trade you. You for Matt Cain? Ortiz and Pedroia? Ugh, come on, Mike Trout All-Star card. I've got an idea. You collected two? This is gonna get the deal done. 1969 Johnny Bench All-Star Rookie? Deal! Rediscover Tops. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, that's exactly what we deliver. This is Precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio and pay no interest for five years, plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select Sierra 1500 Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Welcome to the show. Country Financial wants to know, what if you could own your future? I mean, I would spend it with family and friends. Travel more. Retire. Can make decisions that aren't fear-based about money. At Country Financial, we take the time to get to know you so we can develop a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you take charge of where you want to be. Have that fear removed from my mind. To help you own your future. To be in control of your future. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Tomorrow night, tune in to CSN for the best preps football recap show in town on High School Lights. Hosted by Kelly Kroll, it's Chicagoland's premier destination for post-game highlights, interviews, fan reaction, and more. High School Lights, tomorrow at 11 on CSN. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, tomorrow night, flip over to CSN for the premier prep football recap show in Chicagoland on High School Lights. Hosted by Kelly Kroll, it's a half hour of scores, highlights, and reaction from around the region. Watch High School Lights tomorrow night at 11 on Comcast Sports Net. Frazier gets to work on his uh, delivery. Three to nothing. It's to Norfia. Keeps uh, slowing down that curveball. 71, 69, 66. He telegraphs it a little bit too. It really kind of slows down his delivery. Probably would be better served to try to maintain the same tempo throughout. But he does have that. He got that little hesitation at its balance, at its balance point, and then kind of slings the ball up there. Think about Tom Glavin. You know, that's what all the guys like Lamb aspire to be. You know, throw that little cutter in, command the outside corner. Just do it over and over again for about 20 years. Three straight strikeouts for Lamb since the Jackson home run. 
they got a deal here in Cincinnati that if a Reds pitcher strike out 11 or more, um, you get free pizza at a local pizza place. Um, that has been the case in the first two games of this series. Cubs are going to very be very popular with the Reds fans. A team that uh, strikes out and walks a ton. Side one and one on Baez. He's played all four infield spots since his call up. And he grounds one towards center. That's a base hit. Double single for Baez. Schwarber caught looking in the second. He's got that hand and uh, wrist guard. Remember he broke a finger at AAA earlier this year. So Baez gets on base just to make sure he protects it. Frazier uh, well off the line and deep so Schwarber thought he'd try to push a butt down in that direction he really hasn't changed Frazier's thinking at all he backs off and we saw Baez go head first into second on his double and that's always the fear when you go head first possible finger wrist injury towering fly ball shallow left center it's bourgeois Two outs. It brings up Hamill. Astros rallied. 7 6 win at Seattle last night. They jumped back over the uh, Angels in the second wild card position. As the Angels lost to the Oakland A's. Win split a doubleheader in Cleveland yesterday. They're still in play. Game and a half behind the Astros. Blue Jays clinched their first American League East title since 1993. Cardinals their 11th NL Central crown since the division was created in 1994 and they will finish with the best record in baseball. 159 so far. Phillips makes a catch and the inning is over in the rain. The Cubs going for the sweep leading three nothing in the fourth. Aruba, Jamaica. Now we can actually take it. To Costa Rica, Bahama. Hi. Come on, pretty mama. Belize, Puerto Rico. People, why don't we go down to Mexico? We'll get there fast and you can take it slow. Anywhere you want to go, all the way down to Dominican Republic. Nice hit. Southwest is bringing our low fares to tropical destinations. Book now at southwest.com. Oh, heads up. That calls for a toast. Finney's is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> if you can't find it at Finney's, it's probably not worth drinking. You can't always protect her. Make sure her tires will. The Michelin Premier Tire with Evergrip technology. Even when half worn, it's still safe. Safe when new, safe when worn. When a day's work was mining for gold under the frozen ground for 12 straight hours, Happy Hour had a whole new meaning. And when the men sat down for their banquet, Mr. Coors brought a beer worthy of the occasion. A beer that's still known as the Banquet Beer. 
So the Cubs with 93 wins in the divisional era, and we asked uh, Elias, only two teams have finished uh, in third place with at least 93 wins. So this is uh, pretty historic what has gone on here. 1978 uh, Brewers, a 2002 Seattle Mariners also did it. In 78, the uh, Brewers finishing third behind the Yankees, who were 163, and the Red Sox, 99-64. That was the, the year they had the, uh, the extra game, the Bucky Dent game, 1978. Uh, Baltimore Orioles were, won 90 games that year. So that's the thing, right? Everybody talks about, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame, and it is, that the, the comes to the Pirates, one of these teams is going to be out in one game. But at least you have the chance. There's been a lot of team, a lot of great teams in the history of this game that never had that opportunity. That, you know, 195 games. Or... So one more win in the Cubs since divisions started. We'll have the most wins ever by a third-place team. And they could still catch the Pirates. So they could make the Pirates that team. That Pirate team will host this Reds team over the weekend. Um, Liriano, Burnett, and Happ lined up to pitch for Pittsburgh against Kivius Sampson, Brandon Finnegan, another one of the lefties that the Reds got in the Johnny Cueto deal, and Josh Smith, the, the rookie we saw here the other day. Lace is one all the way to the wall in left center, and he'll end up at second. Well, hits in every inning for the Reds. Five hits on the day. That's their third double, second leadoff double, but they've yet to cross home play. This low fastball, and Bruce just carves it out there into left center. scoot on that wet grass might pay off to play just a little bit deeper give you a chance to cut off a ball in the gap Frazier, tremendous raw power. We've seen him go way up in dead central here, up there near the top of that pilot house. Yeah, pretty cool for Frazier to uh, be an all star this particular year and win the home run derby in his home ballpark. Strike three. Just about everybody seemed to be in play as the trade deadline neared with the Reds. Uh, we heard uh, Jay Bruce's name a lot. He's still here. Frazier's name popped up a little bit, but that was fairly quickly squashed. He said, no, we're not going to move him. I wonder if Brandon Phillips might be on the move this offseason. With the way Suarez has played, if they could... Move Phillips' contract, maybe slide Suarez over to second base and count on Zach Kozart coming back. Let's save him a few shekels. Suarez fouls off first base side. If you're the Reds, with all this young pitching uh, still being developed, 
They're probably two or three years away from being competitive again. At that point, how much does Brandon Phillips have left in the tank? Homer Bailey has a long high dollar contract. That's going to stay fair. Oh, Hamill bobbled. That's a tricky play. You got a guy running right past you. You know you've got him out if you just pick up the ball. It's raining. Ball spinning. And it'll be an error on Hamill. This. I, I can feel his pain right there because it's probably going to, if he lets it go, it's probably going to trickle foul. But he's also thinking, if I could just pick it up, I'm going to get it out here. Concentration, obviously, uh, an issue with that guy running by. Debating whether you're going to pick him up, try to make a quick tag, flip it to first base. Broken here today. A lot of base runners, but no runs. Made big pitches when he has needed to, and he's got another opportunity to do that right here with Barnhart up. Barnhart grounded into a double play last time. Of the 4 6 3 variety. At third, Suarez at first, tap foul. that this is Kyle Schwarber's first start behind the plate uh, since the end of August and, and, and Joe Madden taking these final days of the regular season just to put guys in different spots getting another look at them making sure they're comfortable you know Schwarber might be called upon to do a little catching in the postseason we saw Javi Baez a little bit at first base at the end of the game last night Number 70. It's like Schroeder wants a curveball. Runner goes from first and uh, bouncer to Baez. He's going to fire home and they've got Bruce. So Baez wanted to turn two when he realized Suarez was already at second base. They simply fired to the plate. Schroeder applied the tag. Two down. Suarez moving with the pitch takes away the double play opportunity. Baez alertly adjusts, throws home to get Bruce. Castro inning over. Red strand a couple. Cubs lead 3-0 after four. Today is the start of something big. Journeys aren't just about getting from point A to point B. They're opportunities for new experiences. The 2015 Toyota Corolla is ready to help get you to your next stage and in plenty of style. Let's turn it up. Corolla is ready. Run 
right now, lease a new 2016 Corolla for just $169 a month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. It all starts at Toyota. Let's go places. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Bears Buzz. Visit CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Max Madison Mitsubishi. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Right now is a great time to plan for your 2016 Cubs spring training experience at beautiful Sloan Park. Go to Cubs.com slash Sloan Park to place a deposit on season tickets and secure the best seats available. Individual spring training tickets will go on sale in January. So be sure to visit Cubs.com slash Sloan Park for the latest updates. Well, taking a look at the uh, playoff picture, pretty clear in the National League. Here's the uh, the American League. Blue Jays and Royals have clinched their division. Uh, it is crazy out west, and the Angels and the Rangers will start a four-gamer to finish up the regular season. Yeah, all kinds of uh, potential scenarios there. Um, yeah, four gamer uh, in Arlington while the Astros are off today. We'll play a weekend series at Arizona against the D-backs. Yankees are what uh, magic number of one to yep. punch the top wild card spot. They've dropped three in a row, but they're still in really good shape. Russell Fowler Jackson curve strike. And so Yankees in good shape. And just uh, all kinds of wackiness after that. The Indians are out. Officially eliminated. Way outside two and two. Is it my imagination or have we not seen the the change up here from Lamb today very much at all. That's what I kept reading about. That might have been it. Scored by the speed. I think that was a breaking ball. In there. Oof, slipped it right by him at 88. Tough to get to up there, up above the hands. There's the, uh, the Bell of Cincinnati. Working its way down the mighty Ohio. That's enough. Is a base hit for Fowler. Guys on base for Jackson. Five RBIs last night. Three run homer in the third inning today. <laughs> the 
Big leg kick. Mm, that's confident swing right there. You can tell when a guy's seeing it well. Xfinity high speed action after back to back walks. Jackson with a home run. And then the great running catch. That saved two runs following half inning. Like Lamb has made a, a decision here, a commitment to throw that curveball a little bit more than the changeup. Big differential, 91 92 with the fastball and the upper 60s curve. To say that pitch we've seen it's in 78 to 81 that that's the change yeah I just haven't seen a lot of it and yeah sometimes that change up will have a little cutting action but I haven't seen him really fade it down and away to the right handed hitters His hand trying to stay dry. Raining harder now than it probably has been all afternoon. It's certainly harder than it did during the two and a half hour rain delay, the non rain delay the other night. That's low. And it's full three and two. fly ball type pitcher so you're not that concerned with the ground ball double play especially with Fowler on first and Jackson in the box and Dexter with a very modest lead so I don't think he's going anywhere here well, now he is because that's ball four yep. but he's not moving with the pitch there's Castro hitting third in the lineup today there's Jeff Pico the pitching coach Patience, obviously a buzzword around the Reds these days with all these rookie pitchers. Um, Bailey will be back next year. I don't think they're going to be in the market for, I don't know, I don't know how aggressive they'll be looking for, you know, if they don't feel like they're ready to compete, I don't know how aggressive they'll be looking for another frontline pitcher. So, you know, Bailey would be, he'd be, it'd be like Monopoly, he'd be their boardwalk. You know, they're high dollar, high value guy, and then they'd have a whole lot of like, you know, Baltic avenues. <laughs> you, know, you know, ultimately, you know, ideally, you'd like to have a boardwalk, maybe even a park place, throw in a Marvin Gardens there. I want to play this game with you, but it's been so long since I've played Monopoly. I was going to say that the problem with next year for the Reds and the Brewers is that the Cardinals, Cubs, and the Pirates all what own all the hotels. They got a lot of hotels. Yeah. They got a lot of houses stacked up on their property right. already. <laughs> See, and if, if you if you don't have a boardwalk or a park place, then you got to have a lot of Pacific and Ventnor and. What, you gotta have a lot of threes, I guess is what yeah. I'm saying. Or get a good solid mid rotation, guys. Right. Channel right, Jay Bruce makes the catch. So just in case we ever play, I want to be the race car. Done. I'll let you do that. You can be the shoe.
becoming a lot more uh, thoughtful, more deliberate here. Trying to work his way through trouble in the fifth. Well, with Anthony Rizzo standing in the batter's box, understandable that a pitcher would take a little more time. Make sure he's committed before making the pitch. Pitch that gets him in trouble here is a sloppy breaking ball. And he got it in the head of Anthony. He finished him with a, a good breaking pitch out of the zone last time. And sometimes you get into that mindset and, and you, you get a little lazy with that breaking ball and you hang it in the zone. That's the one that's going to get crushed. That's the change up there. Two on Rizzo. Here's a pitch. Oh, Close, didn't, pitch get didn't get it. That's pitchers, like a lot of pitchers in the league, especially the guys in the division that see Anthony time and time again. They made a real commitment. Uh, we see it from the Reds, we see it from the Pirates to try to jam Anthony. Left field corner over is Bourgeois. It's a fair ball. It's going to bounce out of play. That's a double. So Fowler will score. Jackson will be sent back to third. Four nothing. Anthony take a high fastball and ride it to left field for a two base hit last night. This time he's wondering whether it's going to stay fair or not. This has got a lot of slice spin on it. Bourgeois just can't get there in time, running out of room. And at some point you have to slow down a little bit or you're just going to go headlong into that wall. An RBI double for Rizzo, and that will send Lamb to the showers. Double switch as Brian Price makes the change. It is 4 0 Cubs in the fifth, and we'll be right back. Who says desire?